What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So I got to watch the developer stream and the patch notes are out and by God am I excited. And we're gonna go over a lot of the new changes today. This is just gonna be a recap, so I'm not gonna highlight everything, but I'm gonna go over some of the biggest changes that we're gonna have in Diablo 4 to date. And man, oh man, when I tell you that it is so good. So let's get right into it. All right, so the PTR here, I got some little highlights here. We got harder difficulties, more and more difficulties, and then the Paragon changes are absolutely insane. I do want to add one thing here, Diablo 3 scaling, because there is there is a thing in here that I really want to reference for you guys so that way you guys can kind of like understand how some of this stuff is going to work. But let's go ahead and break down everything that's going to go in here. I'm not going to go over a lot of the skill changes because there's just so much stuff in here but my god all right so let's break some stuff down here we got some leveling adjustments here so when i first heard this i was like oh man this is going to be crazy but it's actually pretty awesome it's it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be it's it's probably going to work a lot better than what players are enduring right now so paragon and character level split the new max level is 60 okay so 60 will now be your new level 100 um it's similar to Diablo 3 in that way. So you'll be at level 60, and then everything post level 60 is when you will be gaining um, Paragon levels, okay? So uh, you'll get an additional 10 skill points from 50 to 60, because remember before we stopped at 50 gaining skill points, and then everything beyond that was Paragon levels. Um, now, once you get to 50, 50 to 60 gives you 10 more skill points, and then starting at 60, you will get um, Paragon levels, okay? So, which is, it's it's very, very interesting, man. So, I'm, uh, it's pretty cool. I really, really like it. The stat adjustments. So, uh, in addition to splitting out character and paragon levels, they, uh, they change stats like health, armor, and core stats just to kind of balance those and make those a little bit better. Okay? So, you see the new brand new difficulty system. So, they are going to have these brand new normal difficulties here. So these are going to be your base difficulties at the start of the game. So you got normal, hard, expert, and pennant. So uh, from what the dev said in the developer stream is that pennant will be your equivalent to world tier two currently. So you're at the start of the game when season six uh, in the expansion drop, when you first start up your brand new character, you're going to be able to select either one of these. One of these four is where you could start. And of course you can change them. Okay. Now after that, there is going to be even more difficulties, which you guys see here, which is your Torment difficulties. You got Torment 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is fantastic. I really love this because back in Diablo 3, we had the normals here, and then we had Torment 1 to 16, which is really, really sweet. Now, the, the lower levels are going to be a little bit, it's going to be lighter challenges for the newer players or players that just want to kind of test their characters. Um, and then as you go higher, it'll be you'll be able to play at a faster pace, which is very, very awesome. All right, now, uh, Torment Difficulties is where things are going to get really, really interesting. So, Pennant is unlocked upon reaching level 50. So, Expert is unlocked after completing Diablo 4's Prologue. And then Normal and Hard are unlocked by default. So, this is going to be really, really interesting. You're really going to feel the progression as you go through these. Um, now, the Gateway to Hell and the Torment Difficulties. I am so happy that these are actually back, even to a degree. You know, not like there's 16 of them in Diablo 3, but more importantly, they're back. So making it to Torment Difficulties is like being a, you know, having a very strong character. So reaching level 60, when you max out your character, you will unlock the pit and tiers 1 to 20 of the pit. And then beating a level 20 pit will unlock Torment 1. So you have to beat a level 20 pit to unlock Torment 1. The difficulty scaling in this game has been based solely around the pit and what level you're playing at. I'll get into more of that in just a second. Beating Pit Tier 35 unlocks two, Tier 50 to three, and then Pit 65 unlocks Torment four. Okay, so now they got some uh, an additional difficulties. Armor and resistances are reduced based on the Torment level that you're in. So four is negative 1,000 armor and negative 100 to all resistances. So this is gonna be really, really interesting. Um, the, these numbers are actually slightly higher than they were currently in the game, but um, I'm very interested to see how we're going to navigate this. I think capping our armor is not going to be a problem, but the resistances is going to be interesting. 
So by adding more difficulties and spreading them out this way, players have now an increased choice with the risk of and reward of playing Diablo 4, right? So monster levels. This is something that's going to be this confused a lot of people when I was watching the dev stream with my chat. So I, I hope that I can break this down and explain it pretty easily for you guys. So monsters will no longer have their levels displayed and will scale to the difficulty that you're playing on. Okay? So what this means is that if you are playing let's say you're playing on pennant now in the dev stream they said that the character level the, the monster level will match your character level which makes sense this is called monster scaling so then the difficulty of the monster meaning their hp their damage etc will be based on which level you're playing at okay which level you're playing at so if you're playing fighting monsters on torment one they're going to be much more difficult than fighting monsters on expert right which is similar to how Diablo 3 does it, and this is how they scale in Diablo 3. You have monster health. Let me actually just scroll this in. You got monster health and monster damage, and then you got your normal hard expert master, and then you get into the torment levels, and you can see that the scaling of the monster's HP and damage go up, but the monsters aren't like higher level, if that makes sense. They're not like level 200 monsters if you're fighting them in torment one. They're still gonna be level 70 monsters from Diablo 3, but they have these increases so that's monster scaling i know a lot of people aren't a big fan of this i am so i'm very excited to see this change you guys have to let me know what you think about that in the comments but it's very it's very very on the surface but i think a lot of people got confused because they're like well how can the monster be stronger but only be my level because we're all used to fighting like level 150 monsters or level 200 monsters right all that's gone it's going to be solely based on the difficulty of the game that you're playing at which is just much better in my opinion. Paragon updates and glyphs, okay? So this one, uh, this is probably the only like big L for me in the entire dev stream because the entire thing was a big dub. So I'll tell you which part is the L for me and I don't like it because I don't like caps and I don't like being restricted. So uh, glyphs, all right? So you're gonna be able to upgrade your glyphs up to tier 50, okay? So you're going to be upgrading your glyphs up to tier 50 now, which is really awesome. Um, so you can upgrade your glyph that's no longer driven by experience. Instead, you're given attempts uh, to increase your glyph ranks by completing pit tiers. So this is very similar to upgrading legendary gems from Diablo 3, right? You finish the Greater Rift. At the end, you got the three or four points to upgrade your um, legendary gems. If you're 10 tiers higher, it's a guaranteed Anything less than that is a slighter chance, you know, a 70% chance to get the advancement on your um, legendary gem. In this case, it's going to be your glyph, right? So these attempts, there's going to be more. You're going to get more by completing the mastery. Bonus attempts for not dying. Um, each upgrade attempt can be increased the glyph, um, and that isn't already max level. Uh, now, if you're completing a, a pit tier that's 10 levels higher, it guarantees an upgrade. Anything less is going to be a chance. Um, completing ones that's like 20 tiers higher grants a bonus upgrade per attempt, which is an example. So if you complete three le le tier 30s, you can take a glyph from uh, rank 9 all the way up to rank 19 from one, which is pretty awesome. So the first pit run, glyph ranks up to one to three. Second is three to five. Third is five to seven. And then you get the bonus rank from seven to nine. This is all in one run. And then you keep going through, etc. So... You're going to be able to do this and get it all the way there. This should be incredibly fast, but you're going to have to very have a very strong build to do this. I think it's going to be faster, um, but I, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting now that all of the glyph experience is all tied to the pit and it no longer is tied to nightmare dungeons. That is very important to know. So you can see here that the glyph radius size is increased from four to five and the glyph gains an additional affix. That's what you see here. You can see that these these uh, these radiuses are going to increase, um, which is really really cool. I do like this. However, we are only limited to five boards. So whereas right now you could have six, seven, eight boards, now they're going to limit us to only five. And one big reason for that is because now our Paragon points are three hundred from two hundred, and this is before the. Um, extra 25 points that you would get from the renown 
So 325 points in total. I, you know, unless the devs say that I that I'm doing that wrong, that would be the math because your normal is 200 plus the 25 from the renown. So if they're just increasing it to 300 before renown, you'll have 325. So this is the only L. I do not like that we're limited to only five boards. Um, we're gonna have so many more points to add in here, but like I described in in like the my you know my watching it live last night. Like, I don't see anybody coming in here and being like, I want to I want to get all of these. I want all of them. One big reason that the devs are doing this is because what they found was in our Paragon boards, we were just taking the routes to get to our glyphs and then like moving on, which is exactly right. That's what we want to do because that's where the power was. So unless there's something that's changing in these Paragon boards to where it's going to give us more power, you know, by taking more glyphs or more like slots, like, I don't know, with so many extra points, can I go around and grab every single yellow and that's going to make my character significantly stronger? Otherwise, I don't know why we're being limited to like, well, now I guess I can fill up this entire board just because. You know, I just, I to me, I just don't understand it. But maybe somebody can help me in the comments. Um, but yeah, you're limited to five. You get 325 Paragon points. So that's really cool. Um, now, item quality, guys, because I don't want the video to go too long. This should be the last section. Um, we they felt that sacred items and ancestral items lost their their like touch. So we are no longer going to have any sacred items. Thank God. Nobody ever spent time in World Tier Three, right? So ancestral items will drop on Torment One. Okay. So when you're going to your difficulties, let me phase back out. You can only get ancestral items once you hit Torment One. So up to Torment One. So up to Pennant. Getting up to Pennant. Am I saying that wrong? Yeah, pennant. Up to pennant, you will get blue items, yellow items, and the normal legendary items. So think of it as playing like in World Tier 2 before you go to World Tier 3. All the legendary items that you find in World Tier 2 are just normal legendary items, and you can put the affixes on them or the, uh, the legendary powers, etc. So ancestral items can only be found in Torment 1. Okay, ancestral items always drop with item power 800. This has been reduced from 925. 800 is the highest. And greater affixes only appear on ancestral items. And ancestral items are always guaranteed to have at least one. It can still be a random affix, but it's guaranteed to have at least one, which is very interesting, I found. Um, sacred items no longer drop. And uh, any sacred items will be legacy. Um, Non-ancestral items are capped at 750 now. And legendary items dropped when you're level 60 will always be item power 750, which is awesome. And then the 750 items, which would be your max until you get to Torment 1, can now be masterworked four times instead of three. Um, because character levels are being readjusted, um, items with item power 540 are being adjusted. Affixes on these will be adjusted to reroll with their respective ranges. Okay. So I really do like the changes to the items. I think this is really cool. Now, something to note here is that when you get to Torment 1, similar to Diablo 3, when you hit Torment 1, okay, you're going to be able to find all of your items. Okay, you're going to be able to find every single item in the game. So in theory, you're going to be able to get your best in-slot gear in Torment 1. You're going to be able to get it in Torment 1. However... We have three more torment levels that can really give us a lot more loot, a lot better loot, and even more loot, right? I want to preface that. Like, the, you'll get more loot and better, like, greater ethics, gear, all this stuff as you go up into the higher tiers. But Torment 1 unlocks everything. You'll be able to find everything in Torment 1. It's no big deal. Okay, I want to preface that people people to have like a an issue with that like oh I got to go to Torment Four to find this stuff. No, Torment One you can get absolutely everything to get your character strong enough in order to go up. Okay, skills and passives. This is the last thing. Um, in here they have a bunch of new skills for um, each class. You got the Barbarian's Weapon Throw here, which is really cool. I think that's great. Druid has this like Raging Stone Burst ability i wasn't too impressed by this necromancer has a very strong ultimate which i think is very cool um but rogue oh my god spin to win 
Gears of the Dreadlands. God DH is back with this. I'm so excited to test and play this class. Um, and then the familiars for the Sorceress, although on the surface, this doesn't look very good, but I think compared with the Fracture Winter Glass, this may be, we might have something here in one of the new um, gloves, but this could be pretty cool. There's some passes, passives in here that you guys can go check out. But the last thing is Rune Words. I am so happy that these are here for all of those that have played Diablo 2. Rune Words are here and they're back, okay? So Rune Words, if you guys don't know, it's basically combining two Rune Words or in Diablo 2, you could, you could combine three and it would give you a brand new power. So for example, you could teleport with a character who doesn't have teleport. So they have brought those back and brought them in here. So you have some here and you're going to be able to combine these. So rune words, okay? You have two rune words that you're going to combine and it has to be combined into two item slots, which is why they increase the item slot on your helmet. So they can be put into your helmet, your chest piece, your pants, and your two-handed weapon if you're using a two-handed weapon. So you have to combine a evocate or ritual rune, a ritual rune, ritual and a evocation rune okay so the ritual wound rune wound rune will have a condition okay so this is travel five meters once you meet the condition is how you unlock the next thing so for example here you have to travel five meters which then will activate the jaw which replaces your next evade with sorcerer's teleport blinking further dealing damage and becoming unstoppable so every five meters that you travel it will give you this condition. So that way you'll be able to teleport. Now, there's a second part to this, okay? Which, this is the addition that they, they added. I'm not sure why they even added it. I guess it's to allow us to not be like super crazy overpowered. And that is the offering. So on your ritual rune, you have to gain offering. The way you gain the 50 offering is by traveling the five meters. So every five meters, you gain 50 offering. And then on Jaw, it requires 500 offering to teleport. So you gain 50 for every five meters. And once you hit 500, then you can teleport. I, I, the only reason I can think that they did this was so that way we're not too overpowered. So, I mean, we'll have to really test this and see how this feels, but I think it's awesome. So they have this in here. And now one more thing, in addition to this, they have some skills from other classes. Okay, so there's an entire list here of the, all the generic offerings here, which I think is cool. And then all the evocation ones, which I think is fantastic. But there is some, uh, oh, they don't have it on here. So there is some from other classes. So for example, you are gonna be able to get the berserking skill from the barbarian with the enhanced berserking to make your character have the increased move speed and all that, it's right here, the arm um, requires 500 offering it invokes the Barbarian's Enhanced War Cry, increasing your movement speed and damage dealt. So there's a few skills from the other classes that you're going to be able to use, which I think is very unique and very fun. This really allows you to customize your character. So with runes, you're going to be able to rune craft here. So similar to G Diablo 2, you're going to be able to stack these runes and you can trade them three to one. So every three runes that you trade will upgrade you to the next one. Um, and it will upgrade to a rune you currently don't have from what they explained. So it's a chance to get a random rune of legendary quality. That's how they explained it in the dev stream. I can't wait to get in here and test this out. Also, there's an additional inventory st uh, stash tab here for stockables, which are going to be to help your inventory on your character, which I think is fantastic. I think this is really good to just give us even more space. But you're going to be able to craft these. So that way you can get the desired runes that you want. In addition to this, you're also going to be able to craft these to use to unlock and craft, or not unlock, but craft mythical items. So they did not say how many runes it's going to take, but it's going to be X amount of runes plus a resplendent spark, and you'll be able to craft a mythic unique, which I think is really, really cool. So you can see here, each one requires, oh, here it is, one resplendent spark and 10 legendary runes of a specific name. 10 rares and 10 magics to do the craft. So you need 30 runes plus a spark and you can craft a mythic. I think that's fantastic. So using three will upgrade, which is great. Non-legendaries are used to craft, fantastic. Uh, the way to get the runes during the PTR will be, they'll be found everywhere, but you'll be able to get them uh, 
Um, in the PCR, you'll be able to get them from the the like um, vendor guy. But outside of that, like once you get into season six, you'll be able to get them from doing um, any content in the game. But more specifically, the Undercity will give you a greater chance for the runes to drop. So that way you can go engage with that content. Whew, boy, that was a lot, guys. I tried to keep the, the video short and sweet. There's so much here. Um, go get into the PTR. It starts next week. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff here for the game. Um, patch notes, if you want to read all over the skill changes, feel free. There's just a lot there. It's like 19,000 words. But my God, am I excited for these changes. I know it's going to feel very similar to Diablo 3 when you're looking at some things. But a lot of these systems from Diablo 3 work really well. So I am very, very excited to see that engage with the runes and really just like take the game to the next level so guys like the video let's get this over 100 likes comment down below let me know what you guys think don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one peace